Howdy guys, IndiePixel here. So I wanted to show off a tool that I wrote a couple years ago called ProTrack. And it was a tool set that basically sat on top of the Houdini engine. So I wrote a, you know, quite a bit of C Sharp code to interact with the Houdini engine API. I wrote a bunch of editor tools as you see here. And what it did is it allowed you to create uh, racetracks relatively quickly. And, you know, while the, the concept here was relatively basic you know you had an oval oval track uh, type thing even though you could have open-ended tracks as well so you could do something more like um, like a dirt type track where it just goes from end to end um, the idea was really to start to explore like what we could do with the um, Houdini engine inside of unity and this was back in uh, I think the beginning of you no, know, it was more like the end of 2013 you know in the first few versions of the Houdini engine uh, I really wanted to mess around with it and um, it was fun. And so here you can see I'm just uh, going and refining a curve and placing a track. And the whole time uh, the terrain is you know, constantly being snapped to the particular track. Now this particular terrain isn't, terrain isn't a Unity terrain. It is a mesh that's being produced by the Houdini engine. So it's, you know, it's a mesh. If you are to export it out, it would just be an OBJ type of, of mesh. So it's not... It's not a, a unity terrain. Um, and so basically here you just go as, you know, a user of the tool itself um, and you'd lay out your track and then it'd start adjusting your terrain to however you wanted it. And you actually had quite a, a few controls. Um, it was an interesting uh, case study into uh, just how far you could take the, the Houdini engine. And I don't think, you know, a lot of people are exploring this aspect of the Houdini engine, maybe at some of the more AAA studios where um, they have teams of programmers because, you know, this took me about a month, I think, to make, you know, in terms of setting everything up inside of Houdini and then getting all my tools working properly inside of the Houdini engine for Unity and then building all the editors so that way uh, designers and stuff like that could use the tool in a really, you know, quick and efficient iterative fashion. Uh, they could be designers and they didn't have to, you know, know a lot about working with stuff inside of unity they could just lay down a curve use the editor tools and start building a track right so that was kind of the the goal for building pro track and you know we put it up on the asset store and it did pretty good the the issue that we ended up dealing with is that you know you have to have the the houdini engine on on your your end basically in order for war the tools to work right so you have to have a license of the Houdini engine or Houdini Indie or effects or core, right? You have to have all that. So if you don't, then, you know, the tool doesn't work. So it was, it was kind of a rough, a rough ride around that particular stuff. So the, the tool itself also took care of, you know, allowing designers to quickly pick, you know, procedural tool that they wanted to start to place on the track. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm building a, a guardrail. Right, so, and this is, you know, at the end of the day, this is just an OTL that the editor tool is instantiating, but what's happening is what the C Sharp code did is it, it would feed in the curve to the actual OTL. So if you're familiar with working with the Houdini engine, you know, if you just work with it in its kind of stock format, right, it's, its base format, you yourself have to draw the curve and then attach the HDA to it. And, you know, you're doing a lot of dragging and dropping and there's a lot of scene management going on. And even in this scene, you can see that the hierarchy view already has tons of stuff in it. So uh, what the ProTrack toolset did was it wrapped the Houdini engine and gave it a nice little interface, allowed you to build these procedural assets really quickly. And, uh, you know, it, it was a really cool concept and it, it wor really worked really well. And, we, I mean, we got a few sales from it all and stuff like that, uh, which was great. People were really interested in it. It was just hard to keep up with the constant changing of the versions of the Houdini engine. Um, and that's starting to slow down now, nowadays, you know, uh, now that we're a few years into it and stuff like that. And, um, but this is the type of stuff you can do with the Houdini engine and C Sharp. So uh, I'm, I'm making this video specifically for uh, one of the YouTube subscribers who asked if you could create procedural levels 
uh, with the Houdini engine and Unity and C Sharp? And the answer is, yeah, you can. It, it really comes down into how you're going to architect all this stuff together. So for me, when I started this, you know, I kind of started to break it down into, you know, large tools like Terrain and Road, right? And then I had a bunch of detail type of OTLs or what, what we like to call more nowadays is HDAs, right? The Houdini digital asset. And so um, I broke it down and once I had a good kind of overall idea of, you know, what kind of HDAs I wanted to produce, I went into Houdini and started creating a whole system that kind of worked with, so all the HDAs kind of work with each other, right? You could feed the terrain into the road, right? And then you feed the terrain and the road into the detail stuff. Um, and so that is how I started to architect this stuff. And then when I brought it all into Unity, I built uh, C Sharp wrapper, like I said before, around all this stuff and um, added the, the editors and it just sped up the workflow so you're not dragging and dropping a ton. So that's basically, you know, a, a good look at what you could do with the Houdini engine and a little bit of C Sharp and Unity editors um, to create procedural levels. And you could totally randomize this just by providing a, a you know seed value. So let's take a look. You know, I produced a lot of tracks with this over the test. So what I did is I also created a nice little car controller. And so let's take a look at that. And you can see that the procedural track, you know, totally holds up. You can drive it. You can come out of play mode and stuff like that and um, edit it some more. So the Houdini engine is super powerful that way. You can totally use it as like a layout tool and then just bake everything down, right? Um, if you want to get more advanced, you can do something like, you know, ProTrack and try to do, do a lot of the scene management yourself with C Sharp and the editor tools um, and keep it live all the time kind of thing. Just keep in mind that when the game actually does get built, uh, the Houdini engine these days um, will strip out all the Houdini engine code. So it does just, at the end of the day, just become a static model, which is what we want anyways, right? Um, so yeah, uh, I'll just let this play some more. And uh, I think, yeah, in the next uh, clip here, I'm going to transition and show just, you know, how the scene is all set up. Uh, it's pretty basic stuff, a bunch of triggers and, you know, stuff like that. This is all done in uh, Unity, I think, like, 5, like the first version, Unity 5. It doesn't even say it on the top, but uh, it was, you know, back in the day. Yeah, so I have a bunch of, you know, trigger boxes that just triggered the direction calls and stuff like that. So, yeah, good examples of building, you know, a procedural track. And the nice thing about ProTrack is you could really just get in there and, you know, in the matter of, I would say, a couple hours, you could build like three or four tracks, you know, test them out. And the cool thing that you is that you can go in and out of play mode and test it out and when you're in edit mode, you're just moving the points around and stuff like the guardrails go with it and the, the road and all the, the foliage and stuff. So that is what I wanted to show in this video. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, thanks so much.